many scientists and people from other nationalities were involved in the underground network. Pakistan has taken the strongest action and has put the network out of business. Dr. A.Q. Khan, who is regarded by a large section of the Pakistanis as a national hero for bringing strategic uh, parity in South Asia, has been treated very harshly. And there are some critics of government's policy in Pakistan on that issue. The investigation is established that many of the reported activities did occur and that these were inevitably initiated at my behest. In my interviews with the concert government officials, I was confronted with the evidence and the findings and I have voluntarily admitted that much of it is true and accurate. Despite Dr. Khan's unprecedented confession on Pakistani television, many believe, both within and outside Pakistan, that he was made a scapegoat for successive governments and army administrations that have been party to the export of nuclear technology. The confession appeared choreographed only because the whole matter became public with the expose in the world media of the extent of Pakistan's nuclear proliferation to North Korea, Iran, Libya and Syria. The Libyans were the first to blow the whistle on the Pakistanis. Most hard-nosed observers dismiss official claims of the Pakistani army being unaware of Dr. Khan's freelance marketing of nuclear secrets, particularly since there was also a close political relationship between Pakistan and these countries. This meant that if Dr. Khan were put on trial, paradoxically for implementing state policy, he could well take down some major military figures with him. In the minutes to follow, we will reconstruct this whole sinister story of stealth, intrigue and deception with the help of experts and a partial reconstruction of events.